Welcome to my course, Game Development Basics, Week 7, Lesson 1, Introduction to Source Control. In this lesson, we'll define source control and its uses, we'll describe some common source control systems, and then we'll download and install GitHub Desktop. The proper use of source control is definitely something that you should master as early as possible in your game dev journey. There are many benefits to using a source control system. The first one is that it tracks all changes to your project, so you'll have a list of every change that you've ever made. And this also means that your project can be reverted back to any previous saved state. So if a mistake is made or something becomes corrupted, you can always revert back to a previous version. Source control also allows control over what changes are committed to the main project files, which means people can be working on different systems and then once those systems are working, you can move them into the primary project, which also means that you can allow multiple users to collaborate on the same project at the same time. So if you're working on a team, this is almost always going to be necessary unless you're working on a very simple and small game where people have very defined roles and they can work separately. But in a vast majority of cases in game dev and actually in any software development environment, whether you're working on a team or not, using source control is highly recommended. There are many source control systems out there, but these are just some of the common ones that are used with game development. The first one is Git, and there's a variety of resources for using Git, GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, Git Kraken, and there are many more. Now, some of these offer free accounts and free access to the software, but in most cases, there is a free tier where you can get started and then you'll have to pay for additional benefits. Some of them require you to pay for additional storage like GitHub and GitLab, while others are subscription-based where you pay a subscription fee and then you can use as much as you want. Before you settle on one of these, I recommend trying a few of them and seeing which one works best for you. But the most common one that I see is usually GitHub. Another common source control system is Plastic SCM. Now, this used to be privately owned. It was recently purchased by Unity, but you can still use it with Unreal Engine and other game engines. There is a free tier that allows up to three collaborators on any project. And as your team grows, the pricing tiers for this are pretty modest. I think it's a great solution for a small team that wants to use this source control system. The last one I'll go over is Perforce. Now, Perforce is a very commonly used source control system with game dev. I get a lot of requests to make a video on this, and I see a lot of teams using it. As a matter of fact, this was the first source control system that I used when I first started learning game dev. There is a free tier that allows up to five seats or five collaborators to work on a project, and the pricing after that is fairly moderate. And there is one other option to do something locally. You can set up your own source control server. This is fairly advanced and I don't recommend it until you have a pretty good handle on how to manage a source control system. So we'll go over some of the common terms with source control, but I wanted to show a typical source control configuration. In most source control systems, you're gonna have a remote repository somewhere. This could be on GitHub or GitLab, it could be an AWS server, or it could even be a server that's managed by your company that's maintained locally. But in most cases, people aren't gonna be working directly on the server itself. It will be somewhere set up as a remote repository. Now, in every repository, there's always what's referred to as the main branch, or in some cases, the master branch, but this is not used as much anymore as it's deemed to be an antiquated terminology. So you'll have the main branch, which is where the primary version of the project lives. And then you'll have additional branches that can be made by specific users or specific groups. And you can even have each branch have its own branching structure. So if you think of it like a tree where there's a main trunk and then each branch can sprout out smaller branches, but everything feeds back into the main branch. Now, each user will have their own version of the repository on their local system, which means you're taking a copy of the remote repository and putting it on your local machine. Now, it's one thing to remember 
that you're creating a copy of the remote repository which means as changes are happening on the remote repository, you need to make sure that you're always keeping the most current copy of the remote as possible. So let's go over the basic workflow of working with source control. And this may vary based upon the system that you're using. The terminology may change or even the process may change slightly, but in most cases, this will be the process that you use for your day-to-day -day workflow when working in a repository. The first step, and this should happen at the beginning of each work session or at the beginning of each workday, is you're gonna pull down any changes from the remote repository. This will mean that your local repository has the most up-to-date version of the repository and all the changes. Step two is you'll create a branch. And even if you're working on a project by yourself, I always recommend working in a branch and not working directly in the main branch. And this will allow you to keep a pretty good log of the changes that are made to your project. Once you create a branch, you're gonna to wanna to push that branch back up to the remote repository so that there's a copy of it there as well. The next step will be to start doing your work. And you'll notice that you'll be creating changes to your branch in your local repository. But these changes only exist on your personal machine. They don't exist anywhere else yet. Step four would be that when you're done with the changes and you have everything working the way you want it to, you'll do a commit. And this will mean that the changes are saved on your local branch and it basically creates a snapshot of your project at that point in time. Now this is really beneficial because it means that you can always revert back to any previous commit if something breaks. So I always recommend to only do a commit when you have things working stably and the way you want. Step five is to push those changes to the remote repository, which means now your branch on the remote repository is an identical copy to the one on the local repository. Now this also means that anyone else that's in the project can now see the changes that you've made. So if you wanted to have someone review the changes and test them out, at this point, they'll be able to see those on the remote repository when they pull down their own copy. The next step is to merge those changes to the main branch. So now your changes that you made become a copy of the primary version of the game. But keep in mind, at this point, the changes are not merged into the main branch on your local machine, which means the last step is to pull those changes down again, which now means that you have those changes in the main branch on your local repository as well. And at this point, depending on how your team structure is set up, you may wanna delete that branch as you're done working in there, or you can continue to work from that branch. It really is up to each team, and I've had different teams manage this differently. These are just some common terms that are associated with source control. A repository is the location where the data is stored and managed. So you can have a remote repository, and you can have a local version of the repository. A branch is a version of the repository, and in most projects, you'll have a main branch, and then each team or each person will have their own branch or multiple branches where they're working on independent features. A commit is a snapshot of the hierarchy and files within a repository, and it's good to remember that you can revert the project back to any previous commit. So again, make sure that you're only committing when you have things working stable. Polling or fetching is downloading the content from a remote repository to update your local repository. Pushing is uploading your local repository content to the remote repository. And merging is combining changes from one branch to another. And in the graph in the bottom, you can see a little diagram that shows this. You'll have the master or main branch, and then you'll be working in your own repository. Each one of those dots represents a commit so you'll have multiple commits. And then when you're ready, you can merge those back into the main branch. Likewise, someone else can be working on the project and they'll be working in their own branch. And then when they're ready, they can also merge those back into the main branch. Now, one thing to be mindful of is that everybody's gonna be working on the same project. So it's really important to communicate with each other on what you're working on so that you're not all trying to change the same files within 
a repository. This will cause what's called a merge conflict, and we'll discuss this further on in the week, and we'll also discuss some strategies for resolving these. But the most important lesson is to make sure that you're communicating with your team. For the rest of this week, we're gonna be working with GitHub and the GitHub client. Now, you can use any source control system that you want, but I recommend at least following along with these lessons because we'll review some of the principles and procedures of working with source control, but these should all apply regardless of what source control system you're using. So to download GitHub Desktop, you'll go to desktop.github.com. You'll see this download for Windows in the middle of the screen. If you're using another operating system, you'll need to download the install file for that operating system. But when you click here, it's just going to do a download and then you'll just go through the installation. Now, I won't go actually through the installation because I already have GitHub on my computer. But if you need any help with this, please feel free to ask in the comments and I can try to assist. You'll also need to create a GitHub account. So you'll need to go to github.com and create an account. You can just do that by putting your email address here and hitting sign up for GitHub. And once you have GitHub installed and set up and you have your account set up, you'll just need to go to file and then options. And then here under accounts, you'll see sign into your GitHub account and you'll just hit sign in and, and it will instruct you to sign in. And then when you return to the GitHub desktop, you'll be signed in and if you open this back up, you'll notice that your GitHub is showing up under the account. And that's pretty much it. So if you need any help, again, like I said, you can put something in the comments or you can ask a question on the Discord server. In the next lesson, we're going to be going over how to set up your own repository for your projects and then we'll get started using GitHub. So I'll see you in the next lesson.